his second book, Strike New Surface, just won the... Uh, Richard Snyder. Say it loud. R Richard Snyder Prize? Uh, the Richard Snyder Prize. So congratulations, Jason. Um, I first came across Jason's work. I was uh, in conference with my teacher and his editor, Mark Rose, past editor, Mark Rose, and I was uh, not writing. I was having a really difficult time, and she pulled the book off the shelf, and it was Jason's, and she gave it to me. And um, I think she meant to break me out of my writer's life, which didn't happen. But I did discover this amazing writer, Jason, who has become a friend and a big brother to me. And I'm so happy that he agreed to do this. So welcome, Jason. So um, I don't know if this is true, but it's in the historical record, uh, the Children's Crusade for and thank you for coming out from the cold. It's really cool. The Children's Crusade for. When we reached Genoa, and the sea did not open, and we were offered homes or exile, there was little choice. We had survived the hot summer, the frozen Alps. This was another trial in our service of God. We left behind the weak and walked to Pisa. The coastline was bleak, but we were sure the sea would open elsewhere, though each day less sure. It was clear that God had abandoned Nicholas, so now we had no leader. We had no homes. We had to continue, even when we saw how bad were the ships that Pisa offered. I sat on the prow as we left port, Palestine far, but in God's grace. Of ourselves and our boat remains no trace. So this, this next one is long, um, but then the other ones go back to sort of being um, more reasonable length. Um, I used to have to walk to work past this billboard that said, um, war is over if you want it. And I couldn't figure out what they were selling. And, like, and I, I don't know if they were selling anything. It could have just been like a, um, like Yoko, you know, telling people something. Um, but it made me really angry because I just, every day I walked past it. It was, it was during, you know, sort of like a lot of the, the height of, of the war, really. And I just kept thinking, it's not true. Like, stop saying that it's not true. Um, so, billboard reading, war is over, billboard reading, if you want it. Oh, and might and violence are characters in Aeschylus' Prometheus Bound, they're actually characters. So that's who might and violence are, they're not. They're kind of abstractions, but they're also equal. Billboard reading, war is over, billboard reading, if you want it. Aeschylus reminds us that might and violence are never far apart. They work together. In this case, not to bind Prometheus, but to make sure Hephaestus does. A good question is, what would you die for? Another question is, what would you kill for? Prometheus is willing to be punished. He knew he would be punished, but not how. Kierkegaard says, only one man is saved. Kierkegaard says, every man can be that man. The Oceanides will not leave Prometheus, even at the risk of being punished themselves. They love his story, though they wish it were different. Sartre says that given the choice between slavery and death, the good man chooses death. Of course, the dead man chooses nothing. Io comes upon Prometheus and asks for her future. Prometheus fears to tell her of how long she will suffer. At the end of her suffering, she will bear his liberator. If Io despairs to the point of suicide, Prometheus will never leave his rock. But the Oceanides insist. They beg her story as a favor, so he tells it. The 1952 movie High Noon is not a Greek tragedy. There is no clear idea of fate or inevitability. Grace Kelly's Quakerism is superficial and reactionary, an attempt to avoid the world and its violence. She seems to have no clear idea of what it is her God demands. If High Noon were a Greek tragedy, there would be a character named Nonviolence. He would be a messenger from the Mighty Father. He would beg Grace Kelly to put down the gun. He would kneel on the street and fill his hair with dirt. He would keen and wail. He would cry, you think you have saved your love, but you have forsaken the source from which your love came. You are tainted and your love will sour. The thoughts of the hell that awaits you will kill the love you now bear. The movie ends without prophecy. 
The movie ends with no higher law than human love and human justice. The fragment we have of Prometheus Bound ends before the eagle arrives. The fragments we have of Aeschylus end before Prometheus is rescued. Nietzsche insists that for the Greeks, there was no suspension of disbelief. They were in the presence of Prometheus. They became the chorus of Oceanides. Nietzsche insists the audience is the chorus, the chorus the audience. Perhaps this explains why I want to save Prometheus. I want to save him from the rock and the eagle. I owe it to him. Every human does. Here is the essence of tragedy. We are weak in the face of the inevitable. We can be noble or brave, but we are always weak. There is no tragedy now because we do not accept our weakness. Grace Kelly picks up the gun because we want her to. No one watching the movie could want anything else. A human facing another human is in a fair fight. A human facing a god is not. The Aztecs thought they had met their gods, and then they were killed. It was proof they were right to regard us as gods. Zeus sends Hermes to demand from Prometheus the name of the warrior who will depose him. Prometheus refuses, but the war will come, and he will be free. We want the war to come. It's what will free Prometheus. It goes without saying, war's not over. Don't make me say, I don't want it.